Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at how to estimate the value of uh, all or nothing options um, and specifically uh, cash or nothing. And the code we're going to use here uh, is VBA and the original form formulas come from Reiner and Rubenstein <clears throat> and 1991. There's um, an implementation of this also in Espen Hogue. So I'm going to take uh, both uh, call and put functions for the binary options and in addition just for good measure I'll throw in some Greeks uh, and the Greeks are estimated here using finite difference so I'll come back to that uh, later uh, so I'm going to go into Excel um, and uh, We've already looked at um, how to set up the payoffs uh, using binary options. There's a video there on Vinegar Hill a binary portal. Um, I go into the developer tab here and then Visual Basic and then I'll create a new a new module, new module. So we'll insert a module and we'll just paste and looks okay we could edit a little bit i suppose uh we can do that afterwards okay so f just for basic implementation then of a cash or nothing uh, call option um basically uh, with binary options they are like uh, in some respects plain vanilla european options except at maturity the payoff that we expect is either some arbitrary amount, cash amount, like $100. And if the stock price or the asset price exceeds the exercise, right, whatever that exercise is. So if let's say we took the cash amount to be 200, 200 here. Uh, if the stock price at expiry exceeds the exercise, which in this instance is 100, right, then the payoff from the option is that 200 cash. Otherwise, you get zero. Okay, so the, the question arises then, how much is this uh, specific option worth? Um, what we can do is we can insert or copy uh, the same page again. So uh, binary cash or nothing. I'll do that again. So move, copy, binary cache or nothing, we'll create a new copy. And then we'll come in here and we'll set K here. And we'll, so we have our usual parameters, S, K, R, Q, T, volatility. And then one additional variable for cache or nothing, binary the cash amount, how much we win in the event of the asset price exceeding the exercise. Okay, so we can put in, I'll just put in uh, just round figures here, risk free rate, 5%, dividend zero, the maturity on the option one year, the volatility 20%, and the cash amount, uh, here would be 100. Now, if we, if we were valuing a Black Scholes model, um, we would. I have a VBA function here, so BSC, and it would be BSC. So we'll try that again. Equal to BSC. So, and then we'll come in here, and we'll just map in. Uh, the exercise is 100, the risk free rate is 5%, uh, Q is 0, the time period is equal to 1 year, and the volatility is 20%. Now if done correctly, this should be 1045, and we have 1045. Uh, remember this is for Black Scholes, called BSC, meaning Black Scholes call okay now for a binary cash or nothing option cash or nothing 
or not in option. Um, we can do the same. So we can go equal to put in cash or nothing, call, come up to FX, uh, put in the same set of variables. The order is almost the same. T equal to one R uh, is actually equal to Q. Sorry, R is equal to 5%. Q is equal to zero. The sigma is equal to the volatility and the cash again also is equal to this instance we have 100 okay and we can take a look at this uh, those values are consistent r5 and cash 100 okay so they all look look good and we get 53 23 so quite a bit of difference between the value of the two even though we've the same parameter inputs uh, but of course here we win $100 if in the case of a cash or notting option, if the value of the call, if the value of the underlying, should I say, exceeds the critical exercise price at expiration, uh, the value of this option is 53.23. How do we interpret this? The way we might interpret this is, um, we have um, in the event of the value of the up, the underlying exceeding 100, um, we get that full 100. Um, so uh, 53, it's almost like, uh, this is almost like a coin toss. And if it's a 50, 50, if it's a roughly 50, 50 outcome, then we should be paying roughly about half the value of the expected winnings. Uh, so it's almost as if we have a 50% chance of not quite dog. D1 and D2 would reveal a little bit. ND1 and D2 would reveal a little bit the probability of being in the money. Um, but if this is a coin toss, we would expect to pay close to 50%. So it, it looks uh, relatively convincing, right, that the model is in line with perhaps our uh, into intuition. Okay, so next step here is uh, we might consider what the payoff is. If we were to include this with the binary option, uh, what does it look like? So normally we do this, we include in the premium, right? Uh, so we could say equal to this value uh, minus uh, the premium. Okay, so this is a premium. This is something that we pay up front for the option, right? And then we can pull this down. And then we can take a look at this, uh, what the payoff looks like. Um, so, so select data, uh, add uh, binary with premium. Right, include it. And then on the x-axis, again, we have the stock price, and on the y-axis, we have the payoff we just estimated. Okay, so what we can see here is if, when we make a bet like this, we put in, we must upfront put in 53.23 to make the bet. If we win, yes, we get 100. But that must then uh, absorb the cost of the bet fifty three. So what we make would be would be fifty three. In the event of losing, then uh, so in, in the event of so we in the event put that thing, explain that again. In the event of the asset price falling below one hundred, falling below one hundred, we would lose fifty three, and that's the premium. So we wouldn't get to 100 at the end if the stock price at the end of the contract maturing in one year falls below 100. We absorb the cost of the premium. If the stock price exceeds 100, exceeds 100, then we uh, 
win 100, but we must uh, subtract 53, 23 from the winnings. And that would bring us back to a gain of 46. So basically, this is like a, a coin uh, toss, right? This binary option with a cash payment of 100 is equal to uh, uh, a coin toss. Okay, I might just do one small change here. Okay, and that's that implementation. Okay, now we'll see later uh, how that is re relevant when we look at bull spreads.